Jasmine, answer me. I need you to do me a favor and go to the supermarket tomorrow. You have nothing else to do, right? So don't be late and show up at the usual time. I'm going to stock up on some food today, but I also need some bleach and some tissue paper. Hi, Isabella. I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. I'm not going to be your errand girl anymore. What do you mean by that? You know that my legs are useless and I can't walk anymore. If you don't get me everything I need every week, then how am I supposed to survive? Stop being so ungrateful and just obey me. How dare you say that to me? You have no idea how I feel. Maybe you should go see a doctor and get your head checked. How many times do I have to tell you? There's nothing wrong with me except for my legs. I don't need anyone's help. Hey, are you ignoring me? I'm sorry, I had to put you in hold for a moment. I was changing the bandages on my head and I had to put my phone down. Bandages on your head? What's that about? Did you hurt yourself somehow? I wouldn't be surprised if you did, since you're such a clumsy fool. You're the one who gave me this wound, Isabella. I told you that I was sick, but you dragged me to your family reunion. I didn't get to enjoy anything. You just forced me to cook all the food and serve it to everyone. And then, when I thought it was over, you sneaked up behind me and smashed my head with a pot. I only did that because I saw you sitting down. And I had to teach you a lesson. You had to learn that you don't get to rest until everyone is satisfied and happy. But I had already done so much for you, and I was feeling terrible. And they weren't even my family. They were yours. All I wanted was to take a break for a little bit, but you came out of nowhere and attacked me. Then, you started yelling all those awful things like, Just because you pay me every month doesn't mean I can slack off. And that your daughter is a thousand times better than me. And then, you hit me so hard. Oh, stop whining. It was just a little tap. Are you serious? There was blood everywhere. I don't understand why you treat me like this. Ever since your husband passed away, I've been your loyal servant. I even send you money every month to pay for all your bills. I do everything you ask me to do. I know that your daughter left you and moved far away, so you can't rely on them for anything. And I don't expect them to come here for every little thing you need either. But I don't get why you had to insult me and compare me to your daughter when I was the one who was always there for you. And after all that, after all the love and care I gave you, getting hit in the head is all I get in return. You must really believe that you're the most important person in the world, huh? You think that just because you married my oldest son, you have the right to do whatever you want? You should be grateful that I let you into my family. And you should be thankful that I accept the money you send me every month. But it's only a measly 2500 That's nothing compared to what you owe me. And you're trying to tell me that that's not enough for you? I know very well that my son works his finger to the bone at this job and that he earns more than enough for both of you to live comfortably. And yet, you refused to quit your job, even though you knew it meant that you would neglect me and leave me alone. You sending me that money was supposed to be a way to compensate for your lack of care and attention towards me. And it barely does that. I'm sorry, but I think that money is more than enough for you to live off of, Isabella. It's only enough for me to survive on. Not enough if I want to enjoy anything in life. If I ever want to treat myself to anything nice or luxurious. Look, I'm about to go to the hospital to get this checked out. And I just want you to know that I will be sending you the bill for my medical expenses. What? Are you kidding me? Is that some kind of sick joke? You really need to get off your high and mighty pedestal if you think this is how you're going to treat me. I should have hit you harder in the head. Then maybe you would have woken up from your delusions. You'll never get a dime from me for your hospital bills. Okay, fine. Then if that's really how you want to play it, I'll just stop sending you money altogether. Why don't you just go ahead and try it? Just remember that to me, that's all you're good for. And if you stop paying me, I will make sure that my son leaves you and never looks back. Hey, Jasmine. Where are you right now? I just got home and the house was empty and dark. I'm starting to panic. There was no sign of you or anything. Did something terrible happen? 
Oh, Nathan, I'm really sorry. I've been so caught up that I haven't been able to contact you all day. I'm actually just about to leave the hospital right now. Wait, the hospital? What were you doing there? Did you get injured? Well, your mom hit me in the head with a cooking pot, and she hit me right where the edge of the pot was. So I was bleeding from the wound a lot, and I had to go get checked out. Thankfully, the doctor said that it wasn't as bad as it looked, and there's no brain damage or anything. Yeah, I'm sorry. Did you say that my mom hit you in the head with a cooking pot? Why were you even with my mom in the first place? I thought you said that you were feeling sick and that you weren't going to go to my mom's family party thing. You even told me that she said that she didn't mind if you didn't go. I know I said that, but then she showed up at her place, ringing the doorbell nonstop, and she wouldn't leave until I went with her. She was making such a commotion, and I just wanted to get her away before any neighbors complained. What is wrong with her? Why would she do something like that? I'm so sorry this happened, Jasmine. I should have been more firm with my mom about this kind of thing, and I wasn't. And now you got hurt as a consequence of my not wanting to confront my mom. Oh, thank you so much, Nathan. But please, don't blame yourself for any of this. I'll let you know once I'm done here, okay? Yes, please. Let me know and tell me if there's anything I can do for you. I'm almost done here, and I think I've been cleared to go home. Would you mind coming to pick me up? Of course, I'll be right there. And then, I think that I'm going to have a serious talk with my mom. There is no way I'm going to sit back and do nothing now that something like this has happened. I really don't think you need to do that, Nathan. What do you mean you don't want me to talk to my mom about this? No, it's not that. I just really don't think that your mom is going to listen to anything we try and say to her. Besides, there's something else. Something else? What do you mean by that? I mean that today, while I was at the hospital, I found out that I'm pregnant. Wait, really? Are you serious? Yeah, they did a full body examination on me and finally used the sonogram and found out. That's why it took me so long to get checked out. But now I'm so grateful that at least I didn't fall in the ground after your mom hit me. Things could have turned out much, much worse especially for this baby I have inside of me. But anyway, for the time being, I really just don't want to see your mom at all. I don't know if she's going to try to hurt me again. I understand that, but I don't think that we can just cut off my mom like it's nothing. If anything, trying to do so might just make her more angry. So you're still not quite ready to stop talking to your mom completely then? Even after this? I know what you're probably thinking about me. Even I'm wondering if this wouldn't have happened if I did something like that sooner. No, I understand it's asking a lot of you to stop talking to your mom. But, I have another idea if you'd like to listen to it. Hey, Jasmine. Just what the heck is going on here, huh? I thought I told you to go out and do my shopping yesterday. Why isn't it done? Good morning, Isabella. I wasn't able to do your shopping yesterday because, as I told you, I was in the hospital. They kept me there late because they wanted to make sure I didn't have any permanent brain damage. I knew I didn't hit you hard enough. If I did, you wouldn't still be making excuses about why you don't want to help out your poor mother-in-law. But at this rate, I'm going to starve. Is that what you want? Honestly, I don't think it would really bother me if you did. Excuse me? What did you just say? How dare you say something like that to a poor old woman like me? You're nothing but a rotten, mean person. Listen, Isabella, I'm not trying to be rude here, but you do have a daughter of your own. In fact, she was there at your little family get-together yesterday. So much of your family was. And yet, I was the one who did all of the cooking and serving. Why didn't you ask anyone else for help? Because... They were all my guests, and I was hosting them, of course. I understand that, but everyone there was family, and I don't get why it would have been so bad to ask for help. Instead, you just put all the work on me, and then went to socialize. In fact, not only did I have to cook dinner and serve everyone, but your daughter even gave me her child to look after. 
And just what's wrong with that, huh? Don't you realize how busy she is raising her kids all the time? The least you could have done was take her kids off her hands for a while and give her a break. I can't believe that all you ever do is complain. Do you enjoy being the way you are? Hey, Jasleen. How dare you not send me any money this month? Did you forget the ultimatum that I gave you? That if you ever stop paying me, that would be the end of your marriage to my son. The son that I gave birth to and raised with my own blood and sweat. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Isabella, but your threat doesn't scare me at all. Nathan and I are already divorced. We signed the papers and everything. Wait, what? What are you talking about? How could you do this to me? Are you really so surprised by that? You were the one who said that if I stopped sending you money, that you would force Nathan and I to get a divorce? Well, I decided that I had enough of your blackmail and extortion. So, I saved you the trouble and divorced Nathan myself. And you know what? It was the best decision of my life. You really are a fool, you know. A stupid, ungrateful, and selfish fool. I must have done more damage to your head than I thought. But now that you've left Nathan, you do realize that you have ruined your life, right? That no one will ever want to marry you ever again, right? I mean, who would want to marry a woman who couldn't even keep her first husband? A woman who betrayed the only family that ever cared for her. You are going to spend the rest of your life alone and miserable. But I'll be kind and spare you that fate. Just this once, I'll let you marry my son again, if you start sending me the money. Except this time, I want 3000 every month, not a penny less. Now, go ahead and thank me, and tell me how grateful you are for this generous opportunity. Isabella, I think there's some kind of misunderstanding here, because I've already gotten married. Wait, what? You divorced my son and have already found someone else? Does that mean you were cheating on Nathan this whole time? You filthy whore! Cheating? No, I would never do that. I'm not you, after all. I got remarried to Nathan. The same Nathan that you tried to take away from me. What's going on here? Is this some kind of silly game you're trying to play? Some kind of sick joke? So then you two never really got a divorce and nothing really changed at all? You just wasted my time and money? No, you still don't get it. We got married. And this time, Nathan took my last name. Okay. Well, now I know that you must be joking. That this is all a lie. Why would my son want to give up his family name for yours? His name that he inherited from his father and his grandfather? Well, that would be because Nathan never wants to speak with you ever again. He hates you and everything you stand for. He wants nothing to do with you or your family. That's a lie, too. My Nathan would never say something like that. He loves and respects me. He knows his duty and his place. Where is Nathan? I want to talk to him. You have got some explaining to do, young man. What's this nonsense I hear about you taking your wife's last name? Please tell me you didn't really do that. That you didn't betray me and your ancestors. It's no mistake at all. We've already done all the paperwork, so it's official. I have Jesleen's last name now. And I couldn't be happier. Oh, you little traitor. You ungrateful, disobedient, and dishonorable traitor. How could you do this to me and to your family? Well, go and reverse it right now. Or do all the years I spent raising you just mean nothing? Do you have any idea how much I sacrificed for you? How much I loved you? I know that you worked hard to raise me, Mom, and I'm thankful for all that you've done. But at the end of the day, you are my mom, and that was your job. I don't think I'm obligated to do anything back for you, especially not something that goes against my happiness and my freedom. Besides, you were the one who cheated on dad and got remarried to that awful man. 
That man who treated you like dirt and treated me like a stranger. Not only that, but you two quickly started treating my sister like she was your only child. And I felt like I had no place at home. No place where I belonged. Are you really speaking ill of the dead right now? How dare you? When did you get so disrespectful? Mom, I know how upset you were when he died. And I really was trying to pity you after he was gone. But I've reached my limits. And now I have to do what I can to protect my family. Your family? Did you get hit in the head too? I am your family, Nathan. I am your mother. The one who gave you life. You can't just take your wife's name and pretend like we don't exist. Besides, you don't even have any kids. How could you choose your wife's name over the rest of your whole real family? What did she do to turn you against us? To make you forget who you are and where you came from? Enough, Mom. I seriously have had it with you. I can't take your lies and manipulations anymore. Jasleen is pregnant with our child. And as her husband and the father, it's my job to be there for them. And it's clear that keeping you in their life would only be a danger to both Jasleen and our child. You would only hurt them and use them like you did to me. I'm making the choice to protect my family from you. I never wanted it to come to this, but I never want to see you ever again. You are no longer my mother. Wait, Nathan. You can't do this to me. You can't just cut me off like that. You are my son. You owe me everything. You can't just throw away our bond like that. Jasmine, what did you do to my son? What kind of spell did you cast on him? He's blocked my number, and he says he never wants to see me again. You knock some sense into this man right this second. You make him unblock me and apologize to me. Isabella, you really need to face reality. Nathan is not coming back to you. He has made his decision, and I respect that. If Nathan says he never wants to talk to you again, then I'm not going to breach that wish. I'm not going to force him to do something he doesn't want to do. He is his own person, and he has his own will. Oh, just shut up, you brat. You don't respect anything. You, you turned him against me, and you're going to try and talk down to me. How dare you do this to me? But you still haven't beaten me. You know I still have another child who I can go to for money. And you really think that your daughter is going to try to do that for you? You're welcome to try, but I don't think it's going to go the way you think. I don't think she will be as naive and gullible as I was. And just why is that, huh? What makes you think you know anything about my daughter? What makes you think you have any right to talk about her? Well, because I've already heard. You've been spending all your money on giglios and hiring handsome men to go out with you. In fact, I've heard you sunk so much money into doing that that you're quite a bit in debt now. You owe thousands of dollars to some shady people, and they are not very happy with you. They're coming after you, and they won't stop until they get their money back. Wait a second. How did you hear about all of that? Who told you? Oh, don't you worry about that. You'll find out soon enough. But judging from your reaction, I take it that all of that is true. So, do you really think that your daughter is going to help you out of this mess you made for yourself? I can't see it happening. After all, she already has three kids of her own. Three kids who need her attention and her money. I seriously doubt she would be able to afford to send you the kind of money that you'd be hoping for. But Nathan and I aren't giving you anything anymore, either. You'll just have to learn how to make do with your savings and retirement money. If you have any left, that is. Wait, so then Nathan knows about all of this, too? He knows about my lifestyle and the debt I'm in? That's right. He knows everything. Your bad habit and the debt that has gotten you in. The men you've been seeing and the money you've been wasting. The lies you've been telling and the fraud you've been committing. He knows the truth about it, and he hates you for it. Well, if you both knew how much money I owe, then you have to help me. You can't just leave me to die. I won't be able to live if you don't keep sending me money. 
I'm afraid that you and I have nothing to do with each other anymore. You are not my mother-in-law. You'll have to figure this out for yourself. Face the consequences of your actions. This isn't a game. How could you do this to me? Isabella, I've already reported what you did to me to the police. And you're going to be arrested for assault and fraud. Fraud? Are you kidding me? That isn't fair. You're just accusing me of false crimes now. How could you get me in trouble? Are you just trying to get revenge on me? But you are guilty of fraud. This whole time, you've led me to think that you could barely get yourself around. But you had your knees replaced a couple of years ago, and you've had no health problems since then. You've been walking and running and dancing just fine. And you've given me nothing but pain and misery and hate. Well, no more. It's over. Enjoy jail. After that, Isabella was arrested and taken away in handcuffs. She screamed and cried and begged for mercy, but it was too late. Nathan watched her being dragged away by the police, and he felt nothing but relief and disgust. He agreed to never speak to her ever again. He wanted to erase her from his memory and his life. I suppose it's only natural that a woman who cheated on her husband would turn to paying men to shower her with attention. But I later heard from Nathan that even his sister cut their mom off and that Isabella was truly left with no one she could turn to for help. She had burned all her bridges and lost all her friends. I hear she had to take a couple of part-time jobs just to keep up with the interest payments on her debt. She had to work long hours and endure hard labor. She also had to live in a tiny apartment and eat cheap food. Meanwhile, Nathan and I have been enjoying the quiet married life and are eagerly expecting the birth of our first child. <laughs>